What's this? Canadian nickels? Yes. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and I thought, you know what? I got my Canadian nickel books in. Why don't I go ahead and pull out all the Canadian nickels I have and see how much of these books I can fill up. I have them from 1858 all the way to 2012. So I grabbed my miscellaneous Canadian nickel jar, all my Canadian nickel rules, and some other bonus ones I got from William Fowler to see how much of these books I could complete when I've never even tried to collect Canadian nickels prior. That being said, I have my Canadian nickel mats. I also have Canadian penny and Canadian dime mats. Figured I'd give them a test out. I'll be looking for some key dates and errors as well as the different uh, compositions and which nickels are represented by which ruler. This is a hodgepodge jar of all the nickels I have ever found either corner hunting or have been given to me on my mail calls. This is a bunch of nickels that I've rolled up as well as received from people on the mail calls. And then of course, William Fowler gave me some extra goodies as well. So I've got the three books. One's for silver, one's for the 1922 to 64, and one's the modern ones, 65 to 2012. Now obviously any nickel minted past 2012, I won't have a spot for. It'll go inside some rolls. But what I'm gonna do today is first and foremost, go through all of these nickels and get them sorted by decade first. Once I have them by decade, then I'll slide them up and then I'll take each decade and sort them by year. Once I've got that done, I'll take each year and choose the best representation of every year to put in my books. We got a lot of work ahead of me. After I have all my stacks of nickels like the Scrooge, we'll bring you back in. All right, well that took some work. We've got the modern ones from 2017 and 18 up here and some 19s. We've got all the other ones in here that are 2010 to present day, 2000 to 2009, 90 to 99, 80 to 89, 70 to 79, 60 to 69, holy cow. The few 50s that I have and the few 40s that I have. I have some that I had sleeved up as well in front of these. I also have some really nice examples of some 60s back there that go with the 60s that may make the book. But just wanted to give you an idea where we're at. We got them all sorted. Now, for sake of time, I think I'm going to start with the most modern ones and work my way back to the older ones. We'll work on this book, 2012 and backwards, to begin. Now the next step is to move these all back, grab the last roll here, and get them sorted by year. Well, it was pretty easy because I only needed 10, 11, and 12. Anything past 2012, my book doesn't hold. So I picked the best 2012. 11 and 10, the RCM stands for the Royal Canadian Mint. They got rid of the P logo in 2006. 2006 P transitioned into the 2006 Royal Canadian Mint mark. Now some were struck with no P and no RCM, so we'll be checking for those as well. When I get to the 06s, I've got some work to do. But in the meantime, it's time to grab the next decade, which really I have about a roll and a quarter of, to finish up 2000 to 2009. Let me get those sorted and we'll see what we got. All right, 2000 to 2012 is done. I did have one uncrowned obverse of the 2003 P logo, but I didn't have two. So I chose to place it in the uncrowned obverse spot. When I find another 2003 P uncrowned, I'll flip it around and put it there. I only had one, at least I had it. And then I had a 2003 P with the crowned queen that looks like that. So I put that one there reverse so that you could see the difference in the reverse. I might switch it around since once I get the P, I'll have that reverse there and I'll have the crowned versus uncrowned showing. But I'll leave it for now. And then I didn't have a 2006 Royal Canadian Mint. I had a couple of the no P and no RCM but they both were trashy and believe it or not, 
That was the best of the two. Unbelievable. Still, pretty good. Only missing two nickels on that page. Now we're going to move on from 1990 to 1999. All right, we've got the 90s done. And I'm only missing a 96 far six. I had two 96s and they both were the near six. And I had to do a little research because I was unfamiliar with what the terminology was. The near six, the six is closer to the D in Canada. And the far six, it's farther. Makes sense. But I had to look at them under the microscope to make sure which ones I had. And I most certainly had two near dates. And that's what I had to choose from. That was the best one I had. So I'll be looking for a far six. You know it. Now let's get on to the 80s. Looks like the 80s are pretty much ho-hum. Nothing going on. Just got to choose the best of each year because there is no varieties or differences or design changes. All right, we've got the 80s done. I had all of them except for, unfortunately, this 81 is the only one I had and it's pretty trashy. I'll let you know that I did check the 1980s. I had three of them for the double date. I checked online to see what it looked like. Did not have any doubling on the date on the three that I had. Fortunately, I had a pretty nice one to put in the book. Now we're gonna move on to the 70s. I'll be paying close attention for the high seven and low seven. I'll have to familiarize myself with the difference between the two, but that's the only thing I see in the 70s that I'll need to concern myself, and there's nothing listed there as well. So I've got almost three rolls of the 70s to look through. Let me get those done and bring you back in. So we got the 70s plugged in, but I don't have a 1970, probably because it only has 5.726 million minted. The good news is I had two high sevens and two low sevens, and I figured I'd show you what those look like under the scope. If you take a look at this seven right here, you can see clearly it's a little bit lower than the other seven. But if I bring up the high seven, you can clearly see it's now a little bit higher. And that's what you want. High seven, low seven. So fortunately, I had both two high sevens, two low sevens, and I got to choose the best of the bunch for the album. All right, 70s are done. I've got a lot of 60s there. It's going to take me a bit. But we're going to do the 60s next. This book only goes to 65. We'll have to get into this book from 64 back. So I think I'll bring you back when I get the upper 60s done. Obviously, there's large and small beads I got to look out for in 1965, which is listed right here. And then when I get to 64, I've got to check for the extra water line or the spitting queen. And then when I get to 62, I got to look for the double date as well. So a lot going on in the 60s with a lot of 60s. Let's get to sorting. I figured before I get too far ahead, I would tell you that I rolled up the 65, 64, and 62 years for the Canadian nickels because those are the three years that have some varieties, if you will. The double date on the 62, the spitting queen on the 64, and the large beads on the 65. I'm just now working on the 65s, and the key here for the large beads is when you draw a line between Queen Elizabeth II's two Roman numerals here, the line should hit a bead square on. Now I've pulled one aside. This is so far a small bead example, but I wanted to show you the difference. When I pull it aside, if I were to draw a line here, it passes between two beads versus striking it. So I'm doing the painstaking task of looking at every single one of these nickels, trying to find a small and large bead variety. I highly doubt that I'll find a large bead variety. It is one of the more rare ones. Still, I have to do that and discern whether or not it's a keeper for the album. So I'm doing each one painstakingly at a time. Once I finish the 65s, I'll let you know what I'm looking for in the 64s. And once I finish the 64s, I'll bring in on the 62s. Once I finish these three years, because I've got all the other years already in the album, I'll catch you up and show you what I did for the decade. Now back to 65s. So as expected and unfortunately, no 1965 large beads variety found. I will point out though, it does help holding it at the right angle. If you notice the picture, the Roman numerals are almost perpendicular to the crown. 
if you hold it at an angle like this, it almost looks like this dot is in the middle. But once you turn it and put it straight up and down, now you can see there's a gap. So in my journey of looking for 65 large beads, I learned that holding it at the right angle does make it a lot quicker to hunt with more certainty whether or not you would even have the 1965 large beads. This is the keeper. These were close seconds. We'll get that in the album. We'll move on to the 64s and I'll bring you back in in a second. So we're getting ready to start the hunt for the 64 Spitting Queen. It's not going to be in my book for a slot for it, but we're definitely going to be looking for it. There's two things on here. There's an extra water line and a Spitting Queen, and I'll show you what that looks like. Here's my 64 Canadian Nickel under the scope. It's got some scuffs, but nothing's in front of her mouth, as you can see. For the Spitting Queen, you're looking for what appears as if she's actually spitting out. And if you see that, then one of the better markers in case there's damage or you don't see it is if you look at the back down here, underneath the K and the G, you can see this extra water line. Let me go ahead and flip this coin around and show you a normal reverse. See how there's clearly a space between K and G? Well, over here, you've got that extra water line. So we'll be looking for the extra water line and any spitting, if you will. I've got almost two full rolls to hunt, so I'll be back if I find something interesting. So we finished looking for the 64 extra water line and or spitting queen. We didn't find any. That being said, I found a great one for my book and an interesting coin under the scope here. Wanted to show you this. I just wanted to give you an idea of what the normal beads should look like. And I know what dye deterioration doubling is or machine doubling, but I want you to see how dramatic these beads become almost double struck. Let me just keep rotating it. You'll slowly see here that we start getting a little bit of machine doubling. Not a big concern. As we continue on, it gets worse and worse and worse until it's almost like it was struck twice. When you look at the designer's initials, we've got some pretty crazy doubling on them, mostly machine doubling. But look at these beads. You even have spots in between the beads like it's been double punched. If you look at the maple leaf, you can see the dye deterioration doubling on that. And then it gets even worse. Now it's just a jumbled mess. You don't know where one bead begins and one bead ends, kind of. And as you keep going, it starts to right itself again. Anyway, I'm not familiar with the amount of normal dye deterioration doubling or doubling you see on the beads on the outside of the coin, but this seems pretty excessive to me. Could it just be worn dyes? Or when we get into here, is there something else going on? Anyway, I'll pull it aside. Would love to hear your guys' comments. I don't spend a lot of time looking at the beads around the Canadian coins, unless I'm looking for the large or small beads, like on the one cent and nickel varieties now. Outside of that, that's all I saw. No 64 extra waterline or spitting queen. Now we're going to move on to the 62 and see if we can find ourselves a double date. But I'll be back in a second to show you what I'm looking for. So I had the 62 double date brought up pretty clear. For me, it looks like it's more machine doubling than anything, but apparently that doesn't exist as much on the Canadian nickels. So we'll be checking it for that, looking for something like that, very similar, and I'll let you know if we find anything. Well, I've gone through all the 62s. This is the one I'm probably gonna put in my book. I just wanted to show you the date area. Pretty much problem free. That's how every single one of those looked. 
except for these two. Wanted to just show you what I spied in there. We've got a little bit of machine doubling on the bottom of the one, the nine, and the two. I'm not so sure it's exactly the same as what we're looking for, but it's definitely odd. And the exact same thing on one right next to it. These two are together. They have the exact same issues. This one a little bit less on the nine. But that's about as close as I got. And again, I know there's a few different double die varieties on the date, some more excessive than others. It's definitely odd for sure. You can see it looks like machine doubling to me, to be honest. But that's kind of how the pictures look too. So I'm going to pull those two aside, put one in my book. You guys let me know if you saw anything there. I'll be back with my book now that I've done the 60s. All right, the 60s are done. You can clearly see we're missing that 70. Got my 69, 68, the old 100th anniversary rabbit. 66, no large bead, 65, got the small. Got a picture of the Tierra obverse as well. I guess I could have chose a better one now that I see there's a scuff on her cheek. We have the 64 and that is in immaculate shape. 63, 62, 61, and 60. Now off to the 50s, paying close attention to the year of the 53 and the double date on the 58. I don't have many 50s. I've got a handful here and one in a slip. That's it. So this will be a quick one. I'll let you know if I find anything. Told you it'd be quick. I got my 50s nickels in there. All I had was a 59, a 57. I had the 53 with the shoulder fold near leaf. And that is the normal one. If you could find a 53 with shoulder fold far leaf, that's the mule scent. Same thing with the 53 no shoulder far leaf. That's the common one. And then of course the variety. So I had a duplicate of the 53. You can see the leaf is near the beads. That's the near leaf. And you can clearly see on Queen Elizabeth II, she's got the shoulder fold right across her shoulder, which they omitted later on for no shoulder fold. Anyway, two of those, none of the others. We did get a 51 commemorative not the 51 higher low relief nickel with the beaver on the reverse. That's the refinery on the commemorative. We did have that one though. I'll take it. It is double the mintage of the other ones, but oh well. And then I had a nice 1950 as well. Now we'll do the 40s and I've got a few of those to put in the book. Well, I'm pretty pleased with the 40s. I had a 48, a 47 with the maple leaf, a 46, a 45, a 44, a 43, which is the Tomback, a 42 Tomback, and a 1940. Plus, we had a few extras to boot. So not too shabby. Unfortunately, I don't have any in the 30s, and I only have a 1927 and a 1922 for the rest of this book. I have a handful of ones in the silver that I've added, let me get this book closed up and we'll grab the silver book. All right, before you laugh, just know I haven't been collecting Canadian silver nickels very long. This is all I got. I've got a 1920, a 1912, a 1902, an 1896, and I guess the star of the show is this pretty good condition, 1884 Far 4 with the blunt four on it. In 1884, there's two varieties for the Canadian nickel. There's a near four with a pointed four and a far four with a blunt four. And you can tell by the space inside of the four as well as the tip that points up is fatter. Now there's damage on that one, which of course throws everything off. But based on my research, it's gotta be an 1884 far four. The good news is despite my lack of silver Canadian nickels, I do have the key date, the 1884, only 200,000 minted. So I'll take that. Obviously uh, not a bad coin to have. Wish I had more, but we just started these books. This is where we start today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed 
this nickel hunt, variety hunt, and book filling for my Canadian nickels. I had a fun time doing it. It was a lot of work, but I finally got this done, which is what I've been wanting to do for a while. Now, I also have a book for my Canadian pennies, as well as my Canadian dimes and my Canadian quarters, but I haven't done my dimes and my quarters. If you guys enjoyed a hunt like this with foreign coins and kind of covering what I'm looking for, please give the video a thumbs up, leave some comments down below, and maybe I'll do my dimes next. That pretty much wraps this video up. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like I said, please give me a thumbs up if you did. And as always, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.